y'all, Dixie here. Since I was planning to eat clean while I was out on the Arizona Trail, I had dehydrated and prepared several of my own meals. So today I wanna share two of those recipes with you, a breakfast and a dinner. These recipes are gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, preservative-free, and dye-free, but they are not free. I will say though that I think sourcing your own ingredients, especially when you can catch meats on sale, is a good way to save money while also eating healthier on trail. And then also you know exactly what goes into your food. Let's start off with the breakfast first since that's the first meal of the day. And this is a mashed sweet potato recipe with nuts. It can also actually double as an on-trail snack or a dessert for the end of the day. Sweet potatoes are a good source of vitamins A, B6, and C. They've also got a lot of fiber and potassium. And since through hikers typically aren't eating so well, even if you're not trying to have the healthiest of diets, it wouldn't hurt to throw something like this in there so you do get some vitamins. This recipe came from backpackingchef.com. That's been a great source for me as I've dehydrated some things over the years and sometimes just having a place to even start with creative ideas is helpful. The ingredients you'll need for this recipe are obviously sweet potatoes. You can do one large or two small. You want approximately 13 ounces before peeling. A half a cup of apple juice and I like to use the real stuff that's not from concentrate typically organic and doesn't have any preservatives and you can find this stuff at some grocery stores. One tablespoon of real maple syrup, typically you'll find this in glass instead of plastic. And finally, a teaspoon of cinnamon. First, you're gonna cook your taters. You can either boil them or bake them and then you wanna take the peelings off. Then you're gonna mash your sweet taters, stir in the syrup, apple juice, and cinnamon. You can run it in a blender. That's what the backpackingchef.com website suggests, but I didn't want to mess with having to take a blender apart and clean it and probably cut myself. So I decided to use a hand mixer and that worked out just fine for me. Once you get your mixture as smooth as you can without some big old clumps in it, you want to spread the mixture out as thinly as possible on a dehydrator tray, either on parchment paper or I ordered these fruit leather trays from Amazon. You can see I didn't do a super job cutting out the hole, but it still works. But one of the things that I really like about these is they've got the little edge, the little border edge. So you don't have to worry about sloshing it out or spilling it out if you spread it a little too thick. It kind of gives you some guidance. Now, this one wasn't exactly the perfect fit for my dehydrator tray, so I didn't maximize my yield because there was some wasted space. So if you can find leather trays made specifically for your dehydrator, that would probably work better. But you wanna aim for about an eighth of an inch thick. The thinner you can get it, the quicker it's gonna dry. The Backpacking Chef website says to dehydrate this mixture at 135 degrees for approximately eight to 10 hours. And somewhere in that time frame, you wanna flip the piece of sweet potato leather or sweet potato bark is what he calls it just to make sure it's drying evenly, but you really just wanna dehydrate this stuff until it's all the way dry. That way it doesn't end up molding or spooling. But the time needed for drying will really depend on your specific dehydrator, what temperature settings it has, and also the way that it dries. Does it blow up from the bottom? Does it come from the back to the front? But that's just a rough idea of approximately how long this might take to dry. As far as output that you should expect from one large sweet potato or two small sweet potatoes, there will probably be around three quarters of a cup of sweet potato bark once you get done with the drying process. So if you want even more sweet potato bark, then you obviously just increase your inputs. So once you have your bark all made up, I like to put about a half a cup tightly packed into a Ziploc bag and then add a quarter cup or so of whatever preferred nuts I wanna eat with it. I like shaved almonds and pecans specifically with the sweet potatoes, but it's just personal preference. You can separate them out into a different Ziploc baggie if you want to. If I was gonna 
go on a trip in the very far future or I was gonna have a really long trip where I was sending myself packages ahead, something longer than just eight weeks on the Arizona Trail, then I might have worried with vacuum sealing this, but I dried my leather really well because I don't typically chew on it while on trail as a snack. I save it for breakfast or dessert. Um, so mine was dried really, really well and I just threw it in a simple Ziploc baggie. If it had been meat, I would do more than this, but with it just being sweet potatoes and nuts, I felt like this would be fine in my packages sent ahead for an eight week trip. On trail to reconstitute my sweet potato mash, I just boil three quarters of a cup to one cup of water, depending on the preferred consistency. And once it gets to a good boil, I dump in my baggie of sweet potato bark and nuts, cover it up and just let it sit and rehydrate for a while. And then after a few minutes, it should be good to go. I do like to make sure I'm also getting protein in the morning. So I would have paired this mashed sweet potato mixture with something like a beef stick or some carnivore snacks, which are really good. Uh, but unfortunately I haven't found a great clean way to have eggs on trail to where they actually taste good. So if y'all have any suggestions, let me know. And now onto the dinner recipe, which is unstuffed peppers. For this recipe, you'll need some instant rice and the minute brand of instant rice is actually just rice. It doesn't have any additives. So I was grateful for that. Also some dried ground beef. You can purchase this from other sources if you want to, but to have a good quality clean input as far as ground beef goes it's probably something that you just want to dehydrate yourself this recipe also calls for dried bell peppers and tomato sauce leather so now i'm going to go into how to prepare each of these ingredients obviously the minute rice we're good to go just the way it is but for the dehydrated ground beef i prefer grass-fed ground beef i wait until i can find some sales going on at the grocery store so i don't have to pay an arm and a leg for it but you take one pound of ground beef put it in a bowl and then you want to dump in a half cup of breadcrumbs but unfortunately for this meal to be gluten-free and not have additives preservatives etc i couldn't use breadcrumbs so as an alternative i used paleo powders breadless breading one thing i like about the particular one i used is it comes with some seasonings already in it so that really helps the meal have more flavor but you can always bring or add your own seasonings another alternative because the paleo powder products can be on the expensive side of things is gluten-free oats and for these alternatives you'd use the same amount and ratio so a half a cup of either the paleo powder or oats to one pound of ground beef the reason we add something like breadcrumbs, oats, etc., is because if you dehydrate ground beef just the way it is, it tends to have the texture of gravel and it doesn't rehydrate super well. So by mixing it in with something that will help absorb water makes it a better product out on trail. Whatever beef you decide to use, just make sure that it's as lean as you can get somewhere in the seven to 10% fat range because if it has too much fat, then that can really contribute to it going rancid before you ever get a chance to eat it just because fats don't dehydrate well. So once you've mixed in your breadcrumbs or alternatives to your ground beef, you're going to brown it in a pan. Once your ground beef is browned up and cooked really well, you'll want to drain it, get as much grease as you can out, and then even blot it with paper towels. Then spread it out on a dehydrator tray, either using parchment paper or the leather trays to cover up any holes because as your ground beef dries and it gets smaller in size, it can fall through the little holes of your trays. Backpacking Chef recommends dehydrating at 145 degrees and estimates it'll take about six hours but mine always seems to take a lot longer the dehydrator that i'm currently using is not probably the best brand i could have i really want an excalibur but anyway uh as the beef is drying you'll want to break up any big clumps that you can to help with the drying process and help it dry more evenly it's a good idea to blot any excess grease you see as the beef is drying because again getting all of the fat you can out of it 
will help it stay good longer. For the bell peppers, you don't have to pre-cook them. Just wash them, slice them up to whatever preferred size you want. If you can, get them as close to the same size as possible just so they kind of dry on the same schedule. Then spread those out on a dehydrator tray and stick them in for six to eight hours at 125 degrees. Again, this time is just an estimate you want to make sure that they are completely dehydrated before you store them for use for the tomato leather i found a jar of clean tomato sauce it's kind of hard to find some of this stuff without additives dyes preservatives but the simple truth organic brand has worked out pretty well for me and that was one of them that didn't have anything like that in it to turn your tomato sauce into leather you want to spread it out thinly like the sweet potatoes on parchment paper or on the leather trays and then also flip it as it dries. You'll know when it becomes a solid sheet that you can flip it over. And with my tomato leather, I blotted it as it was drying because I noticed some oil beads on the top because olive oil is an ingredient in this tomato sauce, but it wasn't one of the first ingredients so there wasn't a whole lot in there but again just to get any fat out that i could conveniently to make sure it didn't spool once you have all of your individual ingredients prepared then you're just going to combine them all together you'll need a half a cup of the minute rice a quarter cup of your dried bell peppers quarter cup of dried ground beef and a quarter cup of tightly packed tomato leather. As an optional ingredient, if you're not dairy free, you could add some sort of cheese to this meal and I feel like it would be pretty good, but that's something optional and something that I would carry separately and I wouldn't combine it with these ingredients. To rehydrate all of this on trail, you'll need a cup to a cup and a quarter of water to boil with all of your ingredients. And then I'd let it sit in your pot for a while to make sure everything gets good and dehydrated, maybe 10 minutes or so before you dig in. Now, as far as how I stored this particular meal on trail, if I was gonna go for a weekend trip and I was preparing this meal the week of, then I'd probably throw it in a Ziploc bag and cook it in my food pot on trail. But because I knew I was gonna be shipping some of these meals ahead and they'd be sitting in a random post office for several weeks with meat as an ingredient, I wanted to do the best that I could to make sure it didn't spool. So I purchased some Mylar bags on Amazon. It was actually a little kit that comes with the Mylar bags, oxygen absorbers, and then some little labels where you can label what your meal is. And I combined all of my ingredients into these little packets. One thing that I like about these is that you don't have much cleanup because then you just take your boiling water, a cup to a cup and a quarter, pour it in this, seal it up, let it sit for 10 minutes or so and dig in. And once you're done, you put this trash in your trash bag and you're not having to clean anything up except your spoon. For 50 bags, all of the oxygen absorbers and the labels, I paid $20. So if you're interested in those, I'll put a link to them in the video description. If you're wondering, well, how do I even use oxygen absorbers or these Mylar bags? So you just open the Mylar bag, throw in all of your ingredients, and then once you open the little packet that the oxygen absorbers are in, and there are several in here, they will all activate. So as soon as these get oxygen, um, they'll activate. So you really wanna make sure that you're making as many meals as there are oxygen absorbers in these little packs. I think there might be like 10 in each pack. So you throw one of the oxygen absorbers in there and I try to press out as much of the air from the bag as I can. As you can see, this one looks pretty thin, but then I, as a added thing, sealed it with my vacuum sealer. I didn't vacuum the air out of it because then it would have sealed below my zipper line, but I just did like a heat seal across the top above where the bag closure is. I don't know why, I guess just for the added comfort that the zipper wouldn't get separated and more oxygen get in somehow. So anyway, those are my two new meal ingredients. I have done the sweet potatoes in the past, but I haven't shared them with y'all, but the unstuffed peppers was a new one for me. So even though I didn't get to actually use them on trail, I have tested them out and it is something that I will definitely use 
going forward. If y'all have any dehydrated meals that have been good to you, especially maybe something you could switch up and turn into at least my version of what clean eating is, then please feel free to leave those in the comments below. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to share these recipes with a friend if you think they might like them, and we will see y'all next time.